Hello. For your bedtime story today, I have chosen The Snow Dragon by Vivian French. The first happening. In the beginning was a world, and it was divided into two halves. The southern half was burning hot and ruled by ferocious fire dragons. But in the cold and icy north lived the peace-loving snow dragon. Where north and south came together, there was a long, narrow land of water and green hills, where tall trees and leafy plants grew. And in this land lived the two legs. The two legs potted about happily for many years, tending the earth and growing fruit and flowers. And the dragons took no notice of them. But then came a happening that changed everything. At the time of the making of the world, a book was written. A book so special that it was always known simply as book. Sometimes book was a handbook of instructions on how the world worked and the dragons found it very useful. At other times book was able, if it felt like it, to tell the future. It was this that caused the happening. The happening began when the most royal of fire dragons himself called for the book Book, he rumbled, tell me if one day I will be lord of all the world, south and north together. Book sniggered and showed a picture of a scurrying beetle. The most royal of fire dragons grew angry. Answer me, Book, he thundered, and his burning breath singed Book's pages brown. Book glared at the fire dragon. Fireworm, it hissed. Read and see the future. And it opened its pages wide. Behold, the time is coming when fire dragons will be no more. The fire dragon stared and stared again. How can this be true, he snarled. Who could ever defeat me? Book turned and a two-leg, a two-leg, sneered Book. <laughs> the fire dragons will be defeated by a two-leg. The most royal of fire dragons roared such a terrible blast of flame that the skies turned to burning crimson and he hurled Book away into the darkness of the swirling smoke. From that moment on, life became a misery for all two legs. The fire dragons hunted them down and blackened their plants and scorched the earth around them. The two legs took to living underground in dark caves and dusty scratched out tunnels. As time went on, the fire dragons flew further and further north, spreading heat and dryness. The peace-loving snow dragons were driven further and further back behind huge mountains of snow and ice until it was thought that there were no snow dragons left alive. But then came the second happening. The second happening. There were many orphans among the two legs. One such orphan, orphan was Little Tuft. He lived with the very oldest two-leg, who told him wonderful stories about life as it had been before the happening. Stories of the shining sun and green plants and the rush and splash of the streams and rivers. Little Tuft listened spellbound. His favourite story was of the magical snow dragons who loved peace and who never went to war. Why can't we go and find one? Little Tuft asked. But the oldest two leg was stone deaf and only smiled and nodded. Little Tuft stopped asking questions, 
but as soon as he grew tall enough to open the huge wooden door that protected the two legs from the world outside, he crept out. He wanted to see for himself what was going on. Outside the caves, Little Tuft stared all around. The earth was charred and burnt and blackened, but the sky was clear and blue. After his years in the gloom of the tunnel, Little Tuft could not believe the lightness and brightness. He took a deep breath and began to walk. Somewhere there was a way to bring back the magic green land that the oldest two legs told such wonderful stories about. There had to be a way, and he, Little Tuft, was going to find it, even if... <gasps> Little Tuft found himself slipping and sliding down a deep, dark chasm between two rocks. Down and down he went, gasping and grabbing at the crumbling earth until... Thump! He landed at the bottom. Excuse me, said a rusty, dusty voice, but would you mind not treading all over me with your grubby little feet? Little Tuft had found a book. Little Tuft scrabbled and struggled and heaved and hauled himself and book back up to the sunlight. There he sat down to rest, and book slyly flutters his pages open. Little Tuft gasped. I can see a snow dragon, he whispered, and he rubbed his eyes. It almost looks as if it's alive. Ahem, said Book. Pay attention. This is the most royal snow dragon, asleep in her ice palace. But is it true? Is she alive? asked Little Tuft breathless in his excitement. Of course she's alive, you foolish two legs, snapped Book. Little Tuft jumped up. Then, he said, we must find her. So Little Tuft set off to find the snow dragon. Book went with him. Sometimes Book showed Little Tuft the right roads, and sometimes it led him into bogs and quicksands and waterless deserts. As they tramped along, Book warned Little Tuft when a fire dragon was near, but sometimes it forgot, and Little Tuft had to scramble into hiding while Book sniggered loudly. And as they travelled further and further north, they saw fewer and fewer fire dragons, until one day they saw none at all. At last, they began to trudge across snow and ice, and the air was full of frost and silver flakes. Little Tuft's footprints stretched behind him. There was no other mark on the wastes of frozen white. The gates to the ice palace were encrusted with icicles, but Little Tuft was small enough to slide between the bars. Book mumbled and grumbled as Little Tuft tugged it the most royal of snow dragons was asleep. Silence hung in the air around him. Little Tuft held his breath and stood still in the doorway. Well, said Book, and flapped its pages. Well, I thought this was what we came all this miserable way to see. Shh, Little Tuft whispered. But the snow dragon Slowly she stretched herself. Longer and longer and longer she grew. Little Tuft stared at her. He couldn't think of anything to say. Get on with it, hissed Book. The snow dragon turned her head and gazed at them. Book, she asked, is it you and a two leg? Little Tuft began to stutter. Please, I need your help. Two legs? the most royal of dragons reared up and little tuft trembled listen 
It was written in book that a two-leg would bring defeat to the fire dragons. And there was war, a terrible, terrible war. The snow dragon stopped, her eyes full of cold tears. Of all the snow dragons, I, only I am left. Why should I help you, two-leg? Fight the fire dragons yourself. Little Tuck was blue with cold, but he took a deep breath. Oh, your majesty, you don't understand. The two legs don't want to fight. All they want is a little land where they can live in peace. Look at us. Book will show you. Book stayed firmly closed. Oh, little Tuck's voice began to shake. Per perhaps, perhaps it doesn't know. Rubbish! Book strutted forward. I know everything. It opened its pages wide, and the snow dragon saw the burnt and wasted world. A page turned, and a two-legged baby cried and cried in a dark and murky cavern. Another page, and little Tuck was struggling across a blackened desert, bent down under book. The snow dragon looked down at little Tuck. Yes, she said, and her voice was gentle. The two legs are very small and weak, but they are still brave enough to walk through fire to ask for help for one another. So yes, I will help you. The steady beat of the snow dragon's wings lulled little Tuck into a half sleep. He was certain that now everything would be made right. The most royal of snow dragons would know what to do. Little Tuft shut his eyes and leant back against the mighty silver wings. Book, he said happily, it'll soon be a happy ever after ending. Book made a snarling noise. I hate happy ever afters. That's no sort of story for a book like me. It began to open and close its covers angrily. Book, little Tuft sat up. What are you doing? I'm going to change the ending, that's what. Book looked at little Tuft and sneered. Watch and see what you will see. <laughs> and Book leapt off the snow dragon's back and half flew, half floated into the grey clouds below. Oh, oh, little Tuft cried out. Oh, snow dragon, what will happen? The snow dragon heaved a deep and painful sigh. <gasps> the fire dragons will know that we are coming. Little Tuft hung on tightly to the snow dragon's scaly neck. But we can still save the world. Look, little Tuft, said the snow dragon. And little Tuft looked far ahead. A huge volcano was belching red and yellow flames high into the sky and fire dragons soared in and out of the glittering sparks that showered from its glowing crater. Little Tuft stared in horror as clouds of thick black smoke swirled into words. Most royal of fire dragons, king of all the world. Book has arrived, said the snow dragon. Little Tuft began to cry. What can we do? He sobbed. The snow dragon did not answer. She began to circle and with scraping of scales against the rocks landed on a bare mountain. Little Tuft, she said, I must leave you here. No, said Little Tuft. Please, most wonderful snow dragon, please don't go home. I didn't mean to cry, but we can't, can't just give up, please. The snow dragon picked Little Tuft off her back and dropped him gently onto the ground. Dear Little Tuft, she said, you've made your journey. It is my turn now. She kissed him with a cold, icy kiss and flew up and up and away. Little Tuft stood and watched as she circled once above him, and then his eyes opened wide. The snow dragon was not flying back to the north. She was flying directly towards the volcano. The last of the smoke letters had not been covering the sky. The fire dragon might have seen the snow dragon inside. 
to stop her. As it was, they were too late. She came hurtling down into the very heart of the fire, and as she dived, the fire and smoke changed to hissing fountains of boiling steam that shot high in the air and cooled into weird and wonderful spikes and turrets and pinnacles of ice. Fire dragons raged and roared and rampaged in the smoke and the steam. But one by one, they melted away into cinders that glowed for one last moment and then went out. Then came the snow. Little Tuft, sitting on his mountain, saw heavy clouds rolling out of the crater and covering the world as far as he could see. Great white flakes softly, gently fell and went on falling. Little Tuft shivered and huddled under the rocks for shelter. He went on watching for the snow dragon until he was frozen with cold. But she never came back. The snow lay crisp and white in hills and hollows for grey day after grey day. Little Tuft scraped and scratched himself a little cave and waited. Then one morning the sun came leaping up into the sky and the snow began to melt. Beneath the snow the earth was green and the sky above was brilliant blue. Drifts of snow heaved and flowed and burst open, and two legs came creeping and scrambling out into the light. They held their arm up their arms to the sun and they shouted and laughed and cried with joy. Little Tuft began to jump down the rocks, but halfway he suddenly stopped. There were snow white clouds along the horizon. For a second he thought he had caught a glimpse of the snow dragon lying in among them. Little Tuft rubbed his eyes. Was it really the snow dragon or a cloud? He shook his head. He would never know for certain, but he waved just in case. Then he ran on to join the other two legs, to be hugged and kissed and to argue about who should be the first to dig the earth and sow the seeds. And book, who knows, but for the moment, the end.